This lesson is for Wednesday, November 6th, and this lesson has to do with Half-Life. So if you remember from um, the past couple of lessons, we've been talking about decay and how things break down and nuclear fission and fusion. Now we'll talk about how long it takes for half of a certain type of material to decay. That's what Half-Life means. So let's go into what exactly Half-Life is. So in terms of a definition, Half-Life refers to how much time it takes for half of a radioactive sample to decay. So, for example, if you had 25 grams of a sample, it measures how long it takes for it to go to 12.5. But not only that, it also measures how long it takes to go from 25 to 12.5 and then to 6.25, which is half of 12.5. So it's basically measuring how long it takes in terms of time that can be minutes, days, years, seconds, how long it takes for half of a certain amount of material to decay. And what generally happens is, as a sample decays, the amount of radioactive material decreases, obviously, because it's breaking down, so there's less and less of the material actually there. And what also ends up happening is radioactive decay eventually slows down over time in a way that the amount of time it takes for half of a sample to decay is constant, regardless of the sample size. So even if you have 100 grams, eventually that'll have to 50 grams, and then 50 grams will turn to 25 grams, and then half of 25 is 12.5, as you can see here. So little by little, the amount of material actually decreasing um, is going lower and lower because you have less material to have it with. But it just um, it just so happens that the amount of time it takes for it to keep having actually is the same every single time. So the equation we use for half life is as follows. We have A, which is the original amount of, uh, sorry, A, which is the new amount of a specific amount of material after having it a couple of times, is equal to A0, which is the original amount, times half to N, which is also known as the number of half-lives. So how many half-lives have passed is the exponent of half. And you multiply that by the original amount, and that gives, that gives you the new amount. We'll see that in a minute with the next slide. Now, in order to find out how many half-lives have passed, we first need to do this. We first need to do <clears throat> the number of half-lives that have passed equals the actual amount of time that's elapsed, or basically the amount of time that's actually passed, divided by the actual half-life. And the half-life is usually in seconds, minutes, days, or years. So you've got to divide whatever the time is by the actual half-life to see how many half-lives have actually passed. So we'll see that in the next slide. But let's just summarize that A0 is the original amount of something. Usually that'll be greater than A, which is the new amount. So you have A0, which is the original amount, and you have it a certain number of times, which is determined by N, the number of half-lives that have passed. And that equals the new amount that's still remaining. Now N equals the number of half-lives, and you do that by dividing um, the actual amount of time that's passed by the amount of time that is in one half-life. So that's usually in seconds, minutes, days, or years. Now let's try um, going through like the steps that actually teach you how to solve half-life problems. And what you need to do is as follows. Um, first, you have to set up two half-life equations. So the two half-life equations are, let's remember, A0 equals the original amount, and we multiply it by half to a certain number of times of half-lives. Um, and that equals the new amount. How do we find the number of half-lives that have actually passed? We have to do n equals the time elapsed or the actual amount of time divided by the half-life. And in number two, you need to look up the half-life of an isotope on table n. So how you do that is if uh, you actually look on table n, you'll see that you have a nuclide in the first column. You have the half-life in days, years, uh, seconds, uh, minutes, and also MS stands for milliseconds. So you have one of these five units, or maybe even something different. But you also have decay mode here and the nuclide name. For example, AU198 has a half-life of 2.695 days. C14, for example, has a half-life of 5,715 years. And you see the decay mode for both these is beta minus, or just beta decay. And we know the nuclide names are gold 198 and carbon 14. So these are, you know, examples of half-lives you can find in table N in your reference tables. Now, what you need to do is you need to plug in um, the half-life 
into um, this equation here, n equals t e over t half. I need to solve for whatever the unknown is. So you'll be given a bunch of information, but you need to actually solve for one unknown. So let's actually try an example problem, uh, or rather two example problems that incorporate what we've just learned. So this first example asks, first, list an isotope and its decay mode that has a half-life less than one second. The second part of the question asks, list an isotope and its decay mode that has a half-life more than 300 years. So if we look on table N, we'll find the following. We'll find that CA37, if you look on the uh, reference table, so let me actually show you that. Um, one second. So if we look on table N, let's look for something with a decay mode that's less than one second, and let's find an isotope, its decay mode, and something that has a half-life more than 300 years. So if we look, let's look for something with less than one second. If we look, we'll uh, zoom in and find out that actually CA37, if we remember those units, CA37 has a half-life of 182 milliseconds. Milliseconds is definitely less than um, seconds. And its decay mode is positron, or beta plus. So this is calcium 37, or CA37. So if we write the answer down, we know that we have CA37, its decay mode is beta plus, and it's um, and its half-life is 182 milliseconds. For something that's greater than 300 years, if we look, we'll find, um, let's see, if we look all the way down here, we'll find that TH232 has a decay mode of alpha, and its half-life is 1.40 times 10 to the 10th years, which is much greater than 300 years. And it's, um, its name is thorium-232, so it's alpha. And it's 1.40 times 10 to the 10th for the half-life. So there we go. Now the second question asks, what is the total number of years that must pass before only 12 grams of an original 48.0 gram sample of SR90 remains unchanged? So if we look, let's go through each step. The first step asks us to put in both of the half-life equations. So let's just remember, a equals the original amount, A0, times half to a certain number of half-lives. And how we find the number of half-lives is we do the actual amount of time that's passed divided by the actual half-life you can find from reference table N. So step two asks us to look at reference table N and find the number of half-lives for, uh, sorry, to find the actual half-life for SR90. So if we look here for SR90, its half-life is 29.1 years. And it's a K mode is beta minus, and this is also known as uh, strontium 90. Now, if we look here, let's try to fill in this equation. We know that the new amount um, is the new amount after the original of 48 grams has decayed. So the new amount is 12.0, which is equal to A. A0 is the original amount, and we know that since it says in original 48.0 gram sample, we know that the original is 48.0 grams. Then we have to multiply it by half to n half-lives. If we look, we need to remember um, that in order to solve in math anything that has a variable, you need to um, isolate it on its own side. So what I did here is I divided 12 by 48 and I got 1 over 4. And that equals half to the n. And if you solve this, you have to multiply half by itself twice. So half times half equals one-fourth, so therefore we've had uh, two half-lives passed. So the number of half-lives n in this equation is equal to two. Then that equals the actual amount of time that's passed, which is what we're finding, the total number of years, divided by the actual half-life of 29.1 years. So if we plug that in, we need to solve for t by itself. So two equals te divided by 29.1 years. So we multiply both sides by 29.1 years to isolate TE by itself. And if we do that, we do 29.1 years times 2. And they, uh, this uh, actually gives us um, a total amount of time of 58.2 years. Same idea here. We plug in um, to these two equations. So we know that the half-life based on table N for P32 
is 14.28 days. So the question asks, determine the total mass of an original 56.0 milligram sample a P32 that remains unchanged after 57.12 days. So we know, that, again, that the half-life is 14.28 days because that's what it says in table N. Now what we need to do is plug into this equation and actually find out how many half-lives have passed. So if we plug in, time elapsed is the total amount of time that's passed. So we know 57.12 days have passed. And we the, then uh, divide that by the half-life of 14.28 days, and we get 4. Now we can plug that into the equation, and we know that the original amount is 56.0 milligrams, um, and we multiply that by half to the fourth, because we have four half-lives, or n equals four half-lives have passed. So if we do 56 times uh, one-half to the fourth, we get 56.0 milligrams times one over 16. And if we do that math, we get 3.5 milligrams remaining unchanged after those 57.12 days. So you're basically just plugging in and solving for an unknown. Here we're solving for um, the unknown that has to do with how much mass of the original amount remains. Next, this question asks, what is the half-life of a radioisotope of 12.5 grams of an original 400, uh, sorry, 400 gram sample of the isotope remains unchanged after 25.65 days? So again, we need to use these equations. Um, now, here, we don't know what the radioisotope is. So we don't know the actual radioisotope, so we can't look it up on table N. However, we can plug in what we know into those two equations. So let's try that out. If we look, we have 12.5 um, grams remaining unchanged after 25.65 days. So that's a new amount. 12.5 grams equals a0, which is the original, or 400 grams, times half to the n. Now, what we can do here is we can divide 12.5 by 400 to isolate half to the n by itself. Because remember, when you're solving for a variable, you have to always isolate the variable by itself somehow. So if you divide 12.5 by 400, you get 1 over 32. And that equals half to the n power. And if you solve for it, you have to multiply half by itself five times to get to 1 over 32. That's just math you have to use. Um, so you know that five half-lives have passed. So therefore, n in this equation equals 5. And we know that 5 has to equal the time elapsed over the half-life. So again, we're solving for the half-life. So let's plug in how much time has actually passed. We know that we have 25.65 days passed. So 25.65 days, we have to divide that by t half and solve for t half. So if we do that, we have to rearrange the equation so that we can isolate t half by itself. So I multiplied t half on both sides, and I got 5 times t half equals 25.65 days. Now what we need to do is we need to isolate t half by itself. So how do we do that? We divide now by 5 on both sides. So 5 times t half divided by 5 is just t half by itself. Then we have to divide by 5 on the other side. So 25.65 days divided by 5 equals 5.13 days. Therefore, we know that the half-life of that radioisotope that we're describing, or T half, is equal to 5.13 days. Now I'd like for you to try this on your own for homework for Wednesday, November 6th. Thank you very much.